Hello friends, welcome back. Today in this video, we'll see how we can create MySQL database using Amazon RDS service. And we'll see how we can access the MySQL DB from EC2 instances. Also, we'll do a set of, of RDS endpoint in our PHP applications. We'll see how we can connect the MySQL database from our CLI. So before moving forward, let's see what is the Amazon RDS. So Amazon Relational Database Service or Amazon RDS is a web service that makes it easier to set up, operate and scale a relational database in the AWS cloud. It provides cost efficient, resizable capacity for an industry standard relational database and manages common database administration tasks. So what we'll do, we'll use the Amazon IDS relational database service to create MySQL DB and the MySQL DB endpoint will use in our PHP logic in PHP code to access our application. Okay, so the entire process will go step by step. So let's start. Guys, if you have not yet subscribed my channel, please do subscribe it now. You will get notified when I upload more videos. So I have logged into my AWS account and just go to your Amazon RDS service. So once you go here, you can in the left hand side, you can find the database. Just click on that and let's go ahead and create a database. Uh, let's choose like the standard create. And here you can see lots of options they have like they they are giving uh, they are going to give the six options six IDS uh, databases so here I'm going to choose MySQL okay now you can see here uh, MySQL community and you can choose the version which version of MySQL do you want so let me choose five point seven point three zero okay and next what we can do. You can see whether we have a template to use for the use cases so let me use for free tier okay I'm not going to use for productions just use for free tier now let's go ahead and setting and just giving the database name okay and this will be your DB instance identifier so let me give the database name as MB database and the credentials okay so it's up to you what credentials you are going to put it. So the master username, let me keep it as root. It's up to you what you want to give it. Okay. Now let me give the password. Confirm the password. Okay. So here, you know that DB instance classes. Okay. So if you are going to use RDS for free tier, okay. So RDS is giving 12 months of free tier service. Okay, so if you are going to use for free tier, just use those free tier classes like DB T2 micro and DB T3 micro comes under free uh, free tier. Okay, so I can select whatever you want DB T2 micro or DB T3 micro. So let me select T3 micro here. Now let's go ahead and select the storage so here you can see the storage type i'm using general purpose sst like gp2 and allocated storage 20 gb it's up to you how much storage do you want okay so do you want for storage auto scaling if you enable it so the storage will be automatically scaled as per your need so the maximum storage threshold is given 1000 gigabyte okay so up to 1000 gigabyte it will increase based on your requirement or need if you don't want you can just unselect the option so i don't need this one now what happens uh, the multi az deployment is disabled so the connectivity site okay the connectivity i'm using the default vpc and the subnet group let's let the default so public access let me give yes i'm going to access it publicly so vpc group uh, choose the VPC 
whatever you have or you can create a new VPC security group okay let me just choose the existing one and select if any okay I have one called lamp SC so let me select this one okay now uh, we have also default one let it be there or you can remove you can remove the default one so availability zone I have not given any preference so it will be automatically given an availability zone by the AWS okay so if you want for any additional configurations you can see here the database port is 3306 by default the MySQL database uses 3306 okay so if you want any password authentication database authentications you can use the password authentication okay now is for additional configuration see so here what happens it gives the DB parameter groups and backups if you want to to automatic backups or database instance you can select here enable automated backups and the backup retention period up to you how much days you want to keep the backup retain the backups okay it gives maximum up to 35 days so let it be seven days and backup window so you can choose a window what time do you want for the backup if you select it it gives the start time and durations okay so you can choose it so let me give us no preference and uh, what happens here enable encryptions if you want use that encryption so you can encrypt the data okay by using the encryption method here so the next one is uh, monitoring if you want to monitor the database logs and all these things you can just monitor i'm just leaving it blank everything uh, for the time being because i'm going to show you and demonstrate how to access the databases okay and maintenance everything is there so let me let everything as it is and go ahead create the database okay okay so before that what it says the password should be eight characters okay password should be eight characters so i can use the password as so here let me change the username to mb user okay now let's go ahead and create database okay so you can see here our database is getting created so it will take few minutes the database to launch you can see here your database might take few minutes to launch so just keep refresh the page or reload the page and see the status will be says like completed so here it is it says the status says available okay so now our database is successfully created the database name is mb database now let's see how we can access the database so if you click on this db identifier okay the db name you can see here the db identifier name is mb database and the cpu what is the amount of cpu being used currently the current activity zero connections and all the details you can find it out okay the availability zone and all this so what we need we need this endpoint and port to connect the database okay so let's see how we can connect the database from the ec2 server using mysql client okay so i have connected to my ec2 instance here and make sure the mysql client is installed here okay so what you have to use you have to use mysql hyphen h so you have to provide the host name or the endpoint right this is the dns name or the endpoint of the ids database provide the endpoint here and now give the port number so it should be uppercase hyphen p okay 3306 now give the username so the user we have given us can be user okay and then provide the password so if you give hyphen p it will ask you for the password now it is asking you enter password just give the password here see 
we can able to connect our RDS MySQL database. Okay, now you can see here none of the database is being chosen, so it says none. So let's see what are the databases are available. So if I do so databases, hit enter, and you can see here it is having this database. Okay, this is having this database details. Now if you want to create a database what we can do we can simply create by using create database suppose the database name i'll give mb database okay hit enter so what happened it created the database let's see see mb database is now created okay so i have few uh, create statement table creations and the insert statement are there i'll just copy paste and show you how we can create the tables and insert data include okay so let me quickly because i need this to be added in our okay so before that what we have to use we have to choose the database we have to use the database use mb database so you can see here database changed and it gives us mb database now we can just paste the statement what we had copied so happen it created the table let me insert some data here one row affected so if you can see the tables we can do so tables here you can see here we have the user table created so i need this user table on the data to log in to our php application that's why i created okay so if i do select star from user table so we have the username and password inserted into the table okay now you see how we can connect the rds mysql database from our command line from our client from ec2 instances okay now let's see how we can update this endpoint in our php application and access from the web okay let me come out from this client i have the php application in my web server so i have installed apache server already in this server and i have copied the web applications into that root folder of the web server so let me go there So the application name is technician report and here we have few php files okay now these are the php files which will use the database endpoint to connect to the database and get the report here okay so for everything actually i have updated the config.php the configurations.php is required by the other php file to get credentials database credentials and connect okay so we don't have to update any other php files simply we have to update the config.php here okay so let me just open this config.php file and here you can see we have our db server db username db password and db database so if we go back and check this login.php right let me just open this login.php you can see here it is coded to connect the database and it has the variable is being passed here the db server db username db password and db database so the same thing we are going to add into the config.php file so let me change the config.php file so as we are into the root directory of the web server we should be edit the files as root user okay make yourself as root sudo vi config now we need to update the server we need to update the db server so what is the what will be our db server our db server will be the endpoint right endpoint of the database rds database 
just update the endpoint here. Let me undo it. Okay, it should be in the single quote. Now let's add the username. So the username is MB user. The password. So I had given MB admin one two three four. So the database name. The database we had created MB database. Okay, so we have given all the informations whatever we had created in the mysql database okay now save this file i have saved this file so now how will access this web applications just grab the ip address of your server where your application is deployed so let me go there um, it is actually running in the ec2 so if i go and grab the public ip of the ec2 instance where the server is running okay so grab this ip address put it here so let me give the technician report the page is opening right that means it is able to connect to the database by using mb user user id and the db server host name okay so let's give the user id and password and see whether we are able to connect or not okay let me give us mb admin we had inserted the user right and let me provide the password okay so we are able to connect that means all the databases all the data whatever inserted in the database are working fine so we see here how we can change the php file and how we can add the rds endpoint into our php application and how we can access the rds hope you understood clearly if you have any doubt or any concerns please write me in the comment section below if you have not subscribed my channel yet please do subscribe now you'll get notified when i add more videos thank you